and on this throne were seraphs, each with six wings, and they called out to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. Amen. God is so holy that the creatures dared not look at him. They had to cover their faces with their wings. When he saw this vision, Isaiah was convicted of his own soul sinfulness. Then I said, it's all over. I am doomed, for I am a sinful man. I have filthy lips, and I live among a people with filthy lips. Yet I have seen the King, the Lord of heaven's armies. Then one of the seraphs touched his lips with a live coal and assured him that his sin was atoned for. Amen. Amen. We can praise God because our sins are atoned for. Amen. God is completely without sin and for this reason he does not tolerate sin but punishes it with death. All people are sinful from the day they are born. Therefore, you can never come before the Holy God in your own strength. But Jesus, through his crucifixion, made it possible for you to approach God. Amen. On the cross, he settled your debt of sin in full. Amen. God will forgive your sins because of his son's death on the cross. Jesus' blood cleanses you from all sin. Amen. Because God is holy, he expects his children to be holy as well. For the scripture says, you must be holy because I am holy. If you truly love God, the Holy Spirit will help you to lead a holy life. Amen. Ask God for, for his help in this area of your life. He will gladly help you. Amen. Can you please arise for the declaration? Father, I worship you as the Holy God, who is without sin. Thank you that through your intercession of Jesus, you enabled me to become holy, and that you forgive my sins. In Jesus' name, amen.
thank you this morning for the blood of Jesus Christ, your Son. We thank you for the cross, O oh Lord. Because of the cross of Calvary, we have crossed over, Lord God, from death to life. We have crossed over, O oh Lord God, from curse to blessings. We thank you that it is in Christ Jesus, your Son, that the blessing of your servant Abraham has come upon our lives. Oh Lord God, it is the blessing of the Lord that make it rich, and you add no sorrow with it, O God. In Christ Jesus, O oh Lord God, we are partakers, O oh Lord, O oh God, of your divine nature in Christ Jesus. We thank you that Jesus Christ is the head of the church. We thank you that Jesus Christ is high and lifted up. He's above all power and all authority, all principality. Seated, up, seated upon the throne, O oh God. We thank you because of the blood of Jesus. Lord God, we have a way of entrance, O oh God, into the Holy of Holies. Thank you this morning, O oh God, that you don't see us by our past, O oh Lord God, but you see us through, O oh Lord God, the lens of the blood of Jesus. Lord oh God, you see us in the righteousness of your Son, Christ Jesus. It is Him, O oh Lord God, who knew no sin, that became sin for us, O oh God, that through His death, O oh Lord, through His crucifixion, O oh God, that we might have life and have it more abundantly, O oh God. We thank you.
Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your presence here this morning. Thank you that you touch your people this morning. Touch the people of God. Renew and refresh, revive and refresh, revive every heart. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, O God, for your blessed name. We pray for all God's people said, Amen. Amen. When she does minister the offering, as soon as she's done, the praise and worship team will uh, minister a song to us. And whilst they're doing that, we will sow our seed, our tithe, our offering in the offering box in the front of the church, one by one. So in other words, when you see that person going back to their seat, the next person will go. But we'll go, we'll do it row by row. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So that is one announcement. Then the second announcement is that this week, um, as many of you know, that we are entering Christmas. So this week, we need some volunteers. Between Thursday and Friday, we'll be putting up our Christmas tree and, you know, in preparation for Christmas. Amen. So, um, you know, if you'd like to volunteer with that, please give your details to Pastor Sharon. On Thursday and on Friday, we will be doing up the church for that. Praise God. And then, last but not least, next week, Sunday, I remember a few weeks ago, I shared with you that we partner with an orphanage in our local township. 
And next week, Sunday, uh, we will be taking up a special offering for the children's home, for the orphanage. Amen. And we will do the presentation, or oh, the handover to them rather, on Monday, the Monday. Praise God. Hallelujah. So just remember that. Remember St. Anthony's Children's Home. Um, there were many that asked if they could also bring along some clothes. You're welcome to bring some clothes. But because it's Christmas, we'd like to bless them financially. We don't know what uh, their needs are. Yes, many times we, you know, we provide them with food. But the thing is, if they've got baked beans and they've got... Um, let's say tin fish or whatever it is and we provide the same and they have a surplus of that but they can use the finance to where it's needed most yeah, amen. amen so just remember that next week sunday we'll be taking up a special offering for the orphanage praise god well give god praise as sister Alicia comes up to share and minister god's precious word with our savior
kids, speak to our offerings and say, you have the power to blossom. You have no hold over me. I give you out of the joy of my heart. That you may be a joy to this house. You will speak for me when I cannot speak. You are a representation of my worship to the Lord Jesus Christ. You are a representation of my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You do not belong to me. You belong to the kingdom of God.
of those things that you have promised us in your precious word. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, we have a living hope in Christ. We thank you, Lord, oh God. In Jesus' blessed name, come and lift up your hands. Lord Jesus, we worship you, we honor you. We thank you. You are the word of God incarnate. Word in flesh. We behold your glory day by day. We open the word of God. We behold your glory. We see transformation. We see a metamorphosis in our very own lives. Lord God, change. We see, Lord God, renewal. We see, Lord God, revival. We see strength. In Jesus' blessed name, we thank you this morning. In your precious name, amen. Amen. Well, praise God. Amen. It's truly good to be in the presence. Say this, Jesus is the best thing that has ever happened to me. Amen. Hallelujah. God gave his best. Oh boy. Oh boy. So many times we find ourselves asking God for things. So very often people desire to have the best. Would you consider this? Have you ever paused for a moment in your life? Have you ever taken the time to just pause and reflect upon this truth? That God has given you his best. You have his best. Jesus Christ, his son, is his best. And he has given you Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So because he's given me his son, I am unashamed and I'm not afraid to ask boldly from God. Come on, talk to me, somebody. I know that whatever I ask according to his will, I know he hears me. And because I know that he hears me, I know that I have my prayers and my petitions answered. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. The book of Ecclesiastes, and I'd like to begin there as a foundation. Ecclesiastes chapter number three, and if I were to title the message, I would title it A Season for Change. Amen. It is your season for change. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. 2020 has given you 2020 vision. Yes. Now you know. Come and talk to me, somebody. You have 2020 vision. If there's one thing it has taught us is to keep our eyes on the Word of God. Is to keep our eyes on Jesus. To keep our eye on the prize. Yeah. Ecclesiastes chapter number 3 and the first verse says this. It says, to everything there is a season. To everything there is a season. A time for every purpose under heaven. There's a time for every purpose under heaven. Hallelujah. So it doesn't matter what you're going through. It's about to change. I say it's about to change. How is it going to change? Psalms 119 verse 9. The Bible says this. The psalmist asks a question. He says, how shall a young man cleanse his way? He goes on to say, by heeding your word. So if you want the way to change, if you want the season to change, it will change purely by the word of God. Hallelujah. We thank God that in the kingdom of God, we don't have to wait three months for a season to change. Your season can change in an instant. Your season can change. Come on, talk to me, somebody. It will change how? When I take the word of God, that I sow it. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah. Take the word of God and sow it in your life. There is nothing, there is nothing that happens in your life that this word doesn't have an answer to. This word has 
have a solution to everything that you are facing. The Bible says the entrance of thy word gives light, gives understanding to the simple. Hallelujah. The word of God will cause things to change in your life. If you want things to change, if you truly want to see change, if you truly want to experience change, it begins with the Word of God. Genesis 1 tells us in the beginning, in the beginning,
Christ Jesus. And you see that? That foreshadow was just one. Never changed, hasn't changed. Fulfilled in the person of Jesus. Up till today, he's still the same. Up till today, he's still saying the same thing. He hasn't changed. Hallelujah. There's a time and there's a season for everything under heaven. There's a purpose to everything. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Go with me to Proverbs chapter number 3. Praise God. Proverbs 3. When you're there, you say amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your precious word. Are you there? Are you there? That's the poorest amen I've ever heard. Are you there? Amen. amen. Proverbs 3 and verse number 1. This is King Solomon. The author of the book of Proverbs is King Solomon, one of the wisest men who ever lived. The sound wisdom for instruction. Solomon speaking to his son. This is God speaking to you and I as sons. He says, my son, do not forget my law. Hallelujah. Do not forget my law. Praise God. But let your heart keep my commands. For length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. Say amen to that. Then Proverbs Chapter number seven, he says, my son, keep my words, keep my words and treasure my commands within you. Another translation puts it like this, he says, my son, lay up these words of mine in thy heart. Wow. Lay up. These words of mine in thy heart. Colossians 3.16 The Bible tells us to let the words of Christ Jesus dwell in us richly. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let the words of Christ dwell in us richly. Now, he says here, my son, keep my words. Lay up my words. These words of mine in your heart. And treasure my commands within you. Treasure. Do we treasure the Word of God? Do we look at the Word of God as the most important treasure there ever is? Last week I shared with you the Word of God is bigger than a gold mine. You understand, if you speak to accountants and business people, they, they will be able to tell you the value of their businesses purely by their financial statements. That's how they measure a value of a business. But the word of God is greater. It, it is greater, it is richer than any mind. And there's a mind here full of promises. My question to you is how often are you mining in the word of God to make it a mind word? To make it a word for you. He says, treasure my commands within you. Treasure it. The word of God should be, should be the most important treasure unto you. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, I have a wonderful treasure. My Bible is my greatest treasure. The greatest treasure I have. And will ever have is the word of God. Hallelujah. He says, My son, keep my words 
and treasure my commands within you. Yeah. Keep my commands and what? Keep my commands and what? And live. You see, if you keep his word, you will live. It doesn't matter what you're going through. You keep the word of God. How do I keep the word of God? By keeping my eye on his word. By meditating on his word. By staying focused on his word. By speaking his word. Come and talk to me, somebody. It doesn't matter what's happening around me. I'm staying on the word of God. I'm standing on the promises of God. I'm standing on the word of God. As long as you're standing on the word of promise, you'll still be standing. He doesn't wash down his word. He doesn't water down his 
that can imagine some of his own people, his own kinsmen, laughing and saying, what is it with this young boy? The shepherd boy. Maybe that's you. The society looks at you. They say, look at this person. Who does he think he is? Who does she think she is? Even the brothers of David, David's elder brothers, they said to him, we know your heart. Hey, no one knows the heart of man except God. His brothers thought they knew. They said, we know your heart. Go back and go look after the sheep. But David understood. There was a word that was in him. That word was saying, David, it's time you step into your season. David, it's time you step into your season. And he got onto that battleground. He didn't see Goliath. He saw God in him. And when he saw God in him, he saw himself as the spiritual giant that he truly was. If you, this morning, in your prayer time, as you pray, understand, you are, listen, you are not at the mercy of your circumstances. Your circumstances are at your mercy. Because you are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. When you are praying here, you are actually praying from heaven. Commanding change. Are you getting what I'm saying? That you will go forth and you'll do the greater works that Jesus. Come on, talk to me. Jesus said, Greater works than these shall you do because I go to my Father. The end of John's Gospel tells us that there are many other works which Jesus worked that are not even recorded in the Bible. Because if they were, there are no number, watch it, there are no number of books in the world to record them. So if there's no number of books that are available to record the works of Christ Jesus, how rich and how valuable is the word of God to the believer. commandments, 
his judgments and his testimonies as it is written in the law of Moses that you may prosper in all that you do and wherever you turn. Keep your eye on the word of God. The word of God should be as a ring to you. A ring of betrothal. That you are married to the word. You are one with the word. You see, there were many in the boat. There were twelve in the boat. And they all were afraid. And they saw, because of what they had seen, they saw Jesus walking on the water. It's something that is not common to man. So they were afraid. I mean, it was at night. And here they see this image of a man walking on the water. And they thought that it was a ghost. And Jesus said, it is I, be not afraid. And then it's only Peter who says, Lord, if it is you, let me to come to you. It is only Peter who says that. And then he says, come. You see, when Jesus gave that word, there was life in that word. And Peter took Jesus at his word. And he became one with that word. And he did what the word said. So he stepped out of the boat. How many of you know that when you step out of your natural into the supernatural, you're always going to get some form of attack? I can imagine the other 12. How oh, he thinks he's going to walk on water. They will all probably say, watch how he sinks. Because when it's time for you to step out of your boat and step into your destiny, you'll always find that there's voices around you want to see your demise. But you keep your eye focused on the word. For as long as Peter had his eye on Jesus, he walked on the water. He walked on the water. Then because the opinions were not enough, then the storm arose at sea. The storm arose. Why? Because the super was disturbing the natural. The natural law of gravity <laughs> was being defined. The word of God is bigger than gravity. But you see what Peter done? He took his eyes off the word. He took his eyes off Jesus. And just in that instant, he began to sink. And he cried out, Oh, Master, save me! And Jesus reaches out to him and says, Oh, ye of little faith. The only time you travel, the only time you go down like the rest of the world is when you take your eye off the world. In Joshua 1 verse 8, God says to Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate upon it day and night. Day and night. You know what's the problem? Many people only meditate on the word when they wait through a night, but when they wait through the day, they forget about God until the night comes. And when the night comes, now they want to meditate and change the circumstances. No, when the goings are good and when the goings are bad, you've got to serve God with your whole heart. Give Him your all. Give the word your full attention, whether it's going good, whether it's going bad. Hallelujah. You've got to be a Jehovah. In other words, you've got to be a man, a woman of integrity. Doesn't matter what's happening, I will worship Him. It doesn't matter what's happening, I will serve you. Don't become a crowd pleaser. Become a God pleaser. Don't 
chase after the crowd. Chase after Jesus. Pursue him. Pursue the word. Because as you pursue him, you are pursuing life. He says, but you shall meditate in it day and night to do according to all that's there in the world. To observe, to do what's in the world. That thou mayest prosper wheresoever thou go. It means there are no boundaries and limitations with this world. This world will work wherever you are. This world will work. We are pilgrims according to the word of God. We do not belong to this world. We are of another kingdom. It's called the kingdom of God. Therefore, we do not function as the world functions. We do not think as the world thinks. Hallelujah. God's word will set you high above your circumstances. I told you we are travelers, we are sojourners. Tell yourself, I'm on a journey. I'm on an exciting journey. Yeah. Because on your journey on earth, there are many things that you encounter, many things that you face. But this world, will cause you to prosper. It will cause you to outlive every tough time that visits you. It will cause you to slay every Goliath that stands before you. It will cause you to move mountains that are standing in your way purely by your word. Because you're speaking faith. You must speak faith. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. And faith comes by hearing the word of God. So you live by what God has said. And you speak what God has said. Say amen to that. Hallelujah. In Romans chapter 7 verse 22. We find the apostle Paul writes to the church at Rome. And he says I delight in the law of God according to to the inward man. I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. In other words, my delight is not based on my flesh, but my delight is that which is within my spirit, my recreated spirit in Christ Jesus. I delight in the word of God. When the word of God becomes your delight, you when, when the word becomes real to you and you start sowing it in your heart, you find that when you face adversity, you start bringing the word of God to the forefront. And as you start bringing that, there's this excitement that happens within your spirit. No one else can see it. That's why you find many times others can't see it and they try to talk you out of it. And they tell you, but can't you see it's getting worse? Can't you see that? No, I don't go by what I see. I don't go by what I hear. I go by the word of God. If God said it, that settles it for me. Because you've, you've just got this in your spirit. You just know that things are going to work out for you. You just know that things are going to work out for you. Because he says, and we know that in all things, in all things, God causes all things to work together for good to those who love him. You see, when you love his word, God himself will cause those things to work for your good. What the enemy meant for this favor, God will turn it into a moment of favor. And favor means it's favor without labor. Because you are resting in his word. When you're resting in his word, you're operating from rest. 
position that we operate from as believers. We operate from rest. He is our rest. Hebrews tells us that. Christ is our rest. We're resting in Him. You just know that God is going to come through. You just know it. Watch this. I told you. Paul said, I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. Psalm 1 verse 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Watch here, verse 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. When your delight is in the word of God, you are blessed. You are blessed because his word is your delight. He says, delight yourself in the Lord your God and he'll give you the desires of your heart. Say amen to that. Hallelujah. You see, Solomon in Proverbs 7, you go there quickly. Verse 2. He said, keep my commandments and live. And my law is like apple of your eye. Bind them on your fingers. You see that? That law. Bind it on your finger. I told you last week, bind yourself to the promises of God. Bind yourself to the word of God. He said, bind them on your fingers. Speaking of betrothal, marriage, a covenant. Brothers and sisters in Christ, ladies and gentlemen, it's time we operate in this covenant. That's how David overcame Goliath because he knew he had a covenant with God. Say to wisdom, you are my sister. And call understanding your nearest king. That they watch it, that they may keep you from the immoral woman, from the seductress who flatters with her words. Solomon probably was sharing the encounter of David, his father, when he committed adultery. Talk to me. Did you know that you can also commit spiritual adultery? Did you know that? It's an admonishment to us. It's a word of instruction to us. Hallelujah. To keep the word of God. To honor his word. Marry yourself to his word. Because there are many things, listen, information is flying at a very vast pace. There's lots of information. Come on, talk to me. Before we used to go to the library and there was lots of information in that building. Nowadays, you just go on Google. You see, and that's the problem with many people. For their problems, they Google their problems. Things they're experiencing in their life, they Google. Things they're experiencing in their bodies, they Google. <laughs> Don't seek Google, seek God. While others are Googling, you God. You go to God. Hallelujah. Because you'll find there's so much information. And there's so many things that can come your way. It may sound nice enough. It may sound spiritual. It doesn't mean because it sounds right that it is right. 
The thing is, how does it line up with the Word of God? You see, when you have the Word of God in your heart, when wisdom becomes your sister, and understanding becomes your nearest kin, when that seductress comes, with the flattering words, the words of the enemy come, you recognize it's not the voice of the Good Shepherd, and you will not heed to it. You will not submit to it. But you tell it to go. You will reject it. Hallelujah. Praise God, somebody. Let me take you to Jeremiah chapter 1. And let me close. Jeremiah 1. Two verses I got. It's Jeremiah 1 and then Genesis 18. Jeremiah 1. Are you ready to hold? 
God was speaking about was a race of people who would be a people of faith, a nation of faith, for the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. My question to you is, are you justified? The Bible says yes. You have been justified. By the blood of Jesus, your justification has come. You have been justified. Just if I never sinned. That's your standing now. Because of the blood. You are another type of people. A people who operate purely by another word. It's not the word of man. It's not the wisdom of man. It's not the understanding of mere man. But it is the wisdom that is from above. Christ Jesus. He is your wisdom. First Corinthians 1, verse 31. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who became for us. He became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption so that him who glories may glory in the Lord. Your glory is not in yourself. It's in the Lord. How about you this morning say, whatever I'm facing is for the glory of God. It's for the glory of God. It's not for me. Because when it's for His glory, when it's for His glory, it brings more people to Him. It brings more people to Him, to His kingdom. It gets other people saved. Because they look at your life. I mean, look at, look at, just look at Daniel. When Daniel, the next day, when the king, Cried out, Daniel, are you alive? He said, yes. My God sent his angels and he shut the lion's mouth. And the king made a decree that there's no other God like the God of Daniel. You understand? It's always for his glory that when others look at your life, they say, but how come? How can you? It's so impossible. No, it is possible. Why is it possible? Because I'm a believer. He said all things are possible to him who believes. I believe all things are working together for my good. That's what I believe. I believe in the one who wrote this word. I believe in the author of this world. I believe in what he has said to me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm a believer. And because you're a believer, all things are possible. So people look at your life. I mean, listen. Those lions hadn't eaten. Those lions were fasting. The lions went on a fast for Daniel. But when they put Daniel in, it is only natural if a lion hasn't eaten for a length of time at the first sight of meat. At the first sight of meat, it will begin to it will rip that meat to pieces. There was Daniel in the lion's den. It was something uncommon, unusual. I'm speaking to somebody 
Get ready for uncommon miracles. Get ready for uncommon favor. Uncommon breakthrough. Uncommon uncomfortable. Are you getting what I'm saying? It is not common. It is not common. It is not common. It is not common. It is uncommon because it causes men to question how can this thing be? How can you still survive? How can you still thrive? How come your children are making it? How come you are making it? How come? How come? How come your marriage is working out? How come it's working out for your children? How come it's working out for your family? How come it's working out for your job? How come it's working out for your business? How come? How come? How come? How did you get in? Who did you know of? Who gave you that contract? Someone must have been on the inside to get you in. Let me tell you, I don't need to bribe a man to get in. Because I serve a God who makes a way when there is no way. I serve a God who will make the call. Because when you pray, 
praying. The person you're praying for will be healed by faith. The minute you start saying, Lord, if it is your will, can you heal this person? This person begins to question, maybe God must be willful. Must understand that God loves them. That person must understand John 3:16. Yeah. For God so loved you that He gave His only begotten Son. That if you believe in Him, you will not perish, but you shall live. You shall have everlasting life. You release words of faith when you pray. Brothers and sisters in Christ. This is my message. This, I am closing now. But this is my message to the whole church. Pray for somebody. You find many people say, I don't know what to pray for. Really, you don't know what to pray for. I don't have time to pray. Really, you don't have time. You drive to work or to school, you stop at the robot. Have you ever stopped? Man, I stopped at the robot one day and God, for a moment, I just stopped. The robot was red and I looked at the people that were crossing. Lord, does this person know you? That's something to pray about. I mean, you drive down the street, you see these old ladies that have sacrificed their families. Because the children nowadays, they make the babies and they leave it for the parents to look after. It becomes the grandparents' responsibility. It is not that. I mean, you see how many of them are standing on the corners there trying to make ends meet. The children are living at large and in charge. But you have the poor granny. Yeah, she's sitting there with boxes. I mean, I'm going to work before 6 o'clock in the morning and here I see they carry these big boxes just to come and sell maybe some maguinas, some fake just to sell something so that they can look after their grandchildren. But it should be the children looking after the parents. The children should be looking after the grandparents and their own children. But here you look at this, this poor grandmother. Come rain, come wind, come what may, day after day, you find that that woman is there. Selling. And you look at that and you, you know, many people don't stop to just look and to say, my God, I pray for that old woman. I pray God that you give us strength. I mean, you're driving, it's raining, there's somebody running in the rain. Oh no. I just pray for that person's safety. I mean, the other day, Pastor Sharon witnessed a tragedy. An old man was crossing the road, and the youngster was reckless. We've got reckless youngsters. And I blame the parents. Really, I blame the parents. If you look at this, it's happening in our country now with this pandemic. It's affecting the young people. Why? Because the parents don't have the children in check. Our young people are reckless. And here's this young man driving recklessly. And he Knocks this elderly man. Knocks him. Fatal. Fatal.
tragedy. There's always something to pray about. There's always someone to pray for. Can we do that? That wasn't part of my sermon, trust me. I'm speaking to you, I'm speaking to myself too. Let us find someone to pray for. Let us find some situation to pray about. There's lots to pray about in your own neighborhood. Pray for your neighbors. We see families being ripped apart. Let's pray for that. See all these things happen. Let us pray. Pray for peace. I would like to encourage us as a church to pray for our Chief Justice of South Africa. Chief Justice Mufeng Mufeng. I believe God has positioned him for such a time as this. A man who's there and who is not ashamed of his gospel. He's not ashamed of Jesus. He's not ashamed and he needs our prayers. I'm sure he covets our prayers. We pray for his protection. Because he's outspoken, the enemy will try to silence him. But we will pray for him. We will pray for him. We will pray for him. And we pray for many others like him. That South Africa will be uprooted of all corruption. Hallelujah. Justice shall be paid in our land. Hallelujah. There's enough believers in this nation to pray for the change of this nation. Let us pray for our leaders. Lead our prayers. Let us pray for them. Let us pray for each other. Come and stand to your feet. Let us pray for Just for a minute, let's just pray in other tongues. Oh, my God. 
God. 